So I have my model here in Mudbox and I was ready to do some texture painting. And when I click to add color to it, I get the old no texture coordinates error. And Mudbox does give me two options for resolving this. Mudbox will create UVs for me, but the UVs are useless. They're like automatic unwrap. Um, and then PTEX is not a solution that I really want to use. So I need to figure out how to get UVs onto this model. So I'm going to step down to my level zero resolution and right click on the model and do a select model and then file send that to Maya and I'm going to send selected as a new scene. And I'll wait a moment for Maya to load up and my object to pop up into Maya. So my object pops up in Maya. Sometimes we uh, don't see a pop-up automatically. I find that clicking on the file menu will help make it show up. And I can look at my object here in my UV texture editor to review that I have absolutely no UVs. We already knew this, but just to confirm. So I want to add new UVs to my object. And I'm going to go into the Create UVs menu. And if I'm in a hurry, I might click on the old automatic mapping. And I end up with, uh, you know, for automatic mapping, this is not too terrible. But the solution that we get is not something that I'm going to be able to paint on in Photoshop later if I want to make changes by hand. So as usual, we need to unwrap our model without Maya's help. And I'm going to do it by breaking the ears off first. Let me turn reflection off here and I'm going to assign a Lambert to this to make things just a little bit easier to see. So I'm going to grab all the faces of my ear, front and back. And I'm just going to do a planar map on this one in the UV texture editor to get it out of the way. And I'll do the exact same thing on the ear on the other side. So in my UV texture editor, I can hold down shift and right click, and that's where that planar map option is. And I can move that guy out of the way. And now when I look at my object, I can grab just the faces of the head. And in this case, I can use a spherical map for my first attempt, because the head is, you know, sort of spherical. Um, but the UV layout that I get isn't terribly useful. I also see that I missed a face on my ear here. So I'll take this opportunity to fix that by just planar mapping again. Moving that out of the way. And back to the head. I'll use a Create UVs cylindrical map. And I want to make sure that the open side of my cylindrical gizmo is facing towards the back of the head. And I'll get something that looks remarkably similar to the spherical map that I just did. I'm going to make a quick change here. I'm going to grab uh, the top part of the skull and I'm going to project that separately on its own. And to make sure that we're selecting it evenly, it can be easier to select things in the side view to just make sure that uh, both sets of symmetrical faces have been selected. And once they are, uh, I'm going to do another planar map on this one. In this case, I'm going to go to my Create UVs, Planar Mapping, and do my option. And I'm going to set my project from to camera. And I, I always like to make sure that my keep image width height ratio is turned on. So I'll project, and that was not the angle I wanted to project from, so I'll just do it again. And now I've got the top of the head mapped separately. I've got the bottom of the head mapped separately. And at this point, I'm ready to start smoothing my UVs. So tools, smooth UV tool, and then I can just click and drag repeatedly on the unfold tool. 
And I want to do the same thing for the skull up at the top here. And then I'm going to grab a bunch of edges at the top of the head and just do a move and sew to fit those together. So the overall head, I'll have to smooth that out again, just using the unfold. Sort of a T-shape if we squint and look at it from very far away. We've got the uh, top of the skull sticking upwards. We get the head unwrapped sideways. And I'm just going to fit this into the 0 to 1 space so that it doesn't tile. And then I'm going to use my smooth UV tool on the ears to just unwrap the ears. And because I'm doing projection painting, I'm not terribly worried about the layout of things like the ears. Um, one thing I can do is go to the image menu and check my shade UVs. And I will orient them so that they're the same. Just I can see that there's these two points that are both pointing downwards now. And I'll just shrink those to fit. And I'm actually going to shrink them both at the same time to make sure that the scaling is identical on these two. And I'll fit them into my 0 to 1 space. And once I've got something that I'm happy with, I do need to test my UVs. And I'm just going to do this by going to my material attributes. Uh, I'm going to assign a new Lambert, actually. And plugging a checker texture into the color here. And turning on high quality rendering or viewport 2.0 and hitting 6 to turn on textures. And with the checker selected, there's a place 2D texture node in there that I want to click on because I can use these repeat UV to raise the tiling amounts of the texture. And I'm just looking to make sure that the size of my texture squares are about the same. In the case of the ears, I can see that the ear squares are really small here, but they're really big here. So just unwrapping it the way that I have doesn't seem like it's going to work. I'm going to have to come up with another solution. So I'm going to grab just the front facing parts of the ear and do another projection on those so that I have the back and the front of the ear separated out. And this should allow me to project uh, or smooth those UVs in such a way that they work pretty well. So again in the UV texture editor I'll do a shift right click and then do a planar map and move that out of the way and then I'm going to do the same thing for the other ear and deselect anything that shouldn't be selected And now I've got something and I can planar map it on its own and use my smooth UV layout tool, Oops. which only works on UVs. So I need to have UVs selected and then I can use smooth UV tool and I can just unfold those. And then I can evaluate now I'm definitely getting a very even set of squares on each set of ears. And we'll see that the squares are much smaller than the squares on the rest of the head. In general, I want to try and aim for the same size squares. This means that my pixel density will be identical between the two sets of objects. So that when I start painting textures on it, I'm not going to get any... Uh, weird areas where some areas are obviously much higher resolution than other areas. And 
and check in the back of the ear. I can see that both of those areas are a little bit too big, so I can scale those down until they match. And because I can, I'll just non-linearly scale my head so it's a little bit taller, so it completely fills that 0 to 1 space. And for an 8192 map, I'll probably be in pretty good shape. I can see the skull in some areas has a little bit higher resolution, but because we're going to be looking at the face most of the time, we're not going to worry about that. So I'm going to save this file just because um, who knows what's going to happen. And I've got two options for how I can get this back into Mudbox. In some cases, I'll see that I'm still connected to Mudbox, and I can simply click the update. And Mudbox will do some stuff. And it should just update the mesh that I was working on to include the new UVs that I've generated. And when it's done importing, I can go to the UV view, and I see that that is indeed the case. However, in some cases, this won't work. For whatever reason, we've lost the link between the two, or um, it just fails to come over. In that case, we have another option where I can grab my mesh in Maya and do a file export selection. And I want to export it as an FBX file. And I can save it as whatever. And in Mudbox, with my mesh selected, I can go up to the File menu and go to Import UV. And Import UV will look for whatever FBX file I'm highlighting, and I can hit Open. And it'll ask me how I want to import my mesh. So Vertex ID would be great if we are absolutely certain that our meshes have the same Vertex ID numbers. They are identical meshes. We did pull it into Maya directly from Mudbox, but one never knows. So I generally prefer to use position. And when I import in that fashion, uh, it should transfer the UVs from whatever is in that FBX file onto my model in Mudbox. And so it's done updating, and I see that it does have the correct UVs. Granted, it's tough to tell because, you know, it also had the correct UVs a moment ago, but these are the two separate methods that we can use to update the UVs on our mesh in Mudbox. And now when I click, I'm going to deselect, and then click my airbrush on the mesh, now it allows me to create a regular paint layer and it asks things about resolution and what channel we're using. So at this point, I'm all set to paint.